Alice in Wonderland. And Alice in Wonderland. I don't freaking know. Don't ask me. Welcome back to Everdis Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Everdis Movie Ever today. I'm going to talk about Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is a 2010 theatrical release about Alice returning to Wonderland to slay the Jabberwocky. It is directed by Tim Burton. Cinematography by Darius Wolski. Editing by Chris Lebenzon. Music by Danny Elfman. And it's written by Linda Wolverton based off the book Alice in Wonderland. By Lewis Carroll, who I've definitely already done a book summary for in my rewatch of Alice in Wonderland. So go give that a watch if you want to see the comparison. It's a little different. Film stars Mia Wasikowska or Wasikowski as Alice, Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter, Helena Bonham Carter as Red Queen, and Hathaway as White Queen, Crispin Glover as Stain, Matt Lucas as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Michael Sheen as the White Rabbit and Stephen Fry as the Cheshire Cat. Joe Roth, Jennifer, and Suzanne Todd approached Linda Wolverton wanting to write some kind of fantasy novel, or fantasy, fantasy screenplay, and Linda Wolverton floated it a grown-up Alice. They took it to Disney and Disney greenlit it. The first script was finished in 2007, uh, and Tim Burton was the choice because of his unique vision. Uh, it was announced that it would be live action and motion capture, like, combined. And then Burton officially signed on to direct, and he was given feature-length rights to his 1984 short, Frank and Weenie. Burton had a weird connection to the source uh, material and found it always to be about a girl that just went from weird character to weird character, and it lacked an emotional connection. So Burton really wanted to cast an unknown actress in the role of Alice, and a lot of people agreed originally some people wanted Anne Hathaway, but Anne Hathaway showed more interest in being the White Queen, which obviously everyone accepted, so that's great. Um, he found Mia uh, and said a simple kind of power to her, not flamboyant, not very showy, but just somebody that's got a lot of internal life to her. And then Johnny Depp and Helena and Matt Lucas and all of them got casted soon after. They filmed in September of 2008 and it was mostly green screen like to the point where after a full day on set cast the cast would feel nauseated after seeing so much green like Tim Burton had lavender lenses fit on his glasses to counteract the counter the effects and it's tons of CG. Sony Pictures Imageworks designed the visual effects for them. It has a video game adaptation, Alice in Wonderland. It had about a $200 million budget and made $1.025 billion in the box office. It has a 51% of Rotten Tomatoes consensus. Tim Burton's Alice sacrifices the book's minimal narrative coherence and much of its heart, but it's an undeniable visual treat. It was nominated for Best Art Direction, Best Costume, and Best Visual Effects. It won Best Art and Best Costume, and it did receive a sequel, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Let's do this together. So first, it is very visual effecty. You can tell like all of it minus like the actors are CG, and then some of the actors have CG on them, like Stain and the Red Queen. Some of them have just like a lot of visual effects going on on them, which is all fine, but Bayard and the horse look very animated -y, which is interesting because they definitely were trying to make some other things look very realistic. This also is the first live action film I've seen so far that has really dipped into the orange and teal theme. So the orange and teal theme. Let me see if I can find a summary of this. Teal and orange. This color grading technique, which combines teal and orange hues to create contrast and depth, was first popularized by films of the 2000s and has since become a widely used technique in the film industry. A staple in modern cinema, it says. The teal and orange look has become a staple in modern cinema thanks to its unique uh, ability to create a sense of depth and visual interest. The origins of the teal and orange look can be traced back to the work of famous colorist Steven Sonnenfeld, Company 3. He invented the look for Michael Bay's 2003 film Bad Boys 2. The technique was initially developed as a way to make the film's Miami setting appear more vibrant and colorful and to give the film a distinct visual style. This is fabulous. Look at this. We're learning together. The success of Bad Boys 2 helped popularize the teal and orange look and it quickly became a go-to technique for many filmmakers and colorists looking to create a distinct visual style for films. What makes it so unique? 
What makes the teal and orange look so unique is the way it uses color to create contrast and depth. The teal and orange hues are opposite each other on the color wheel, which creates a stark contrast when they are used together. This contrast helps create a sense of depth and visual interest, drawing the viewer's eye into the scene. Additionally, the colors work in harmony when used on skin tones, doesn't wash them out while giving a warm, sunny, and inviting feeling. Interestingly, even the famous painter Van Gogh used a similar color scheme in his paintings, for example, Starry Night is a clear example of the complementary colors teal and orange in order to create depth. All right, I will not keep going. You're understanding the, 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 the sentiment here. So the early 2000s, it's, you know, Bad Boys 2 is the first one that really, like, did the orange and teal thing. This is still used today. Big time orange and teal moments where, like, it's just so blatantly obviously, blatantly obvious Mad Max Fury Road. That entire movie is orange and teal. It is color graded orange and teal. Everything, every person, everything is orange. There are a couple red things. And then the sky and every background thing is teal. 100% won't miss it. It's an orange and teal movie. Um, other movies that I noticed it in, the first movie I ever pointed it out to Mariah was To All the Boys I Loved Before. There's a lot of orange and teal happening and I, I said something about it being like a theme in movies to constantly use orange and teal together um, in modern cinema, and she was like, whoa. So then she just like kept noticing it. So it is a color scheme that is used frequently and it was very strong in this, specifically in the scene, not like all over the movie, it had its moments, but in the scene where the Mad Hatter's like reliving the old stuff and they're in that like desolated wooded area, it's literally like orange and teal on either side of the background. And I was like, hey, <laughs> orange and teal, it's making an appearance in a live action Disney movie, it's been a minute. Uh, because I've been watching all the old movies. <laughs> so I'm expecting that we'll probably start to see orange and teal more and more going forward, which is crazy. I saw this in theaters and I think that's it. I've never been a big Alice in Wonderland girly, okay? I know Alice in Wonderland fans are like Alice in Wonderland fans, right? I don't hate it. I like Alice in Wonderland fine. Um, but I definitely saw this in theaters and then I think like never again. I saw clips, I'm sure. Um, I just... I had zero memory of the opening. I forgot we opened in the real world, even though like the original one opens in the real world, but like barely. I forgot we opened in the real world and that's just like gonna be proposed to. Like I totally forgot about all of that. Um, the end up as Aunt Imogen thing really hurt my feelings. Poor Aunt Imogen, dude. That's mean. I also forgot they posed it as she had been there as a child and they needed her to come back. Um, and then like the, the time she was there as a child was the events of the movie, like the original like, cartoon where she like paints the roses and like deals with all of that kind of stuff. Um, we must commence the slaying and such. Took me out. That was really funny. Um, story. I don't understand why the Mad Hatter all of a sudden has a very deep Scottish accent. I don't know what choice that was. I don't know why. Um, the parallel from the opening where she's looking at all these people staring at her, watching her to make a choice about saying yes to Hamish, to everyone looking at her, waiting for her to make a choice about being the champion. Ooh, mwah, a beautiful parallel, a beautiful sentiment on how she can make her choice and vouch for herself and just all of that. That was really, really great. I loved that a lot. My favorite part is stupid. Um, it's Bayard getting reunited with his family. <laughs> I'm so happy that he got to be with his, his wife and puppies again. That made me so happy. Aubrey, uh, when they got reunited, I went, mm, and Aubrey was like, oh, and I was like, what? I just was happy. My least favorite part, the futter whacking. How unnecessary is that? The whole setup of the futter whacking is stupid. The whole like, moment that Mad Hatter does the futter whacking is stupid and then Alice doing a little futter whacking when she gets back to the real world. First of all, it's a word that sounds like it really should be a bad word. Second of all, so unnecessary to the story. And like, I feel like really horribly placed when they've like accomplished their goal. She slayed the Jabberwocky. They have Wonderland back. It's gonna be peaceful again. The White Queen is the queen again. Like. All this kind of stuff, it's so unnecessary. And like no one else is like dancing and celebrating. It's just the Mad Hatter doing a quick little futter wagon dance. And it's so, ugh. it's like cringe. Like you've watched this really great moment. You're like, awesome. It's a pretty good movie. It's pretty adventurous, pretty whimsical, pretty fun. And then he does like a stupid futter wagon. And you're like, okay, this was for the children watching. And then when she does it back up in the, 
No. Cringe, kind of embarrassing, couldn't deal with it. Would I watch it again? Yeah, probably. Would I recommend it? Sure. It's a fun movie. It's fantastical. Tim Burton-y. It's fun. It's a fun time. Fun time. Uh, specific moments. Alice... Ah, all of Alice's moments with, with animals were great. Like, when they realized she was Alice and, like, turned for her. So, um, the one creature that gave her the scratch on the arm, so sweet. Cheshire Cat helping her, so sweet. Um, the porcupine hedgehog thing helping her, so sweet. Just any time an animal, like, turned on the Red Queen and, like, helped her was the best ever. I loved that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Her realizing everything from her childhood was real and wasn't a dream and deciding to be the champion was so good. I love that. And then her standing up for herself and for her family and being much more confident when she gets back home is so good. I love it. It's so fabulous. I could eat it up. Um, and I, yeah, this is good. It was entertaining. I liked it. I, no, no complaints. I mean, I'm not no complaints. It's Futter Whack and it's stupid. And like, you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's a fun movie. It's fun if it, I have never seen through Looking Glass, so I'm excited to eventually get there because I have no idea what that's about. Zero clue. I'm excited to find out. That's everything. My final rating is eight hats. Yeah? Sure? Vorpal swords. How about that? Eight swords out of 10. Our total movie count is our parent death toll is. <laughs> Cry count is still the same. I didn't cry. Uh, if you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on all socials. You'll find out the movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon out of the tiers starting at just $1. Get every video a week early. Coupon code for merch. Um, exclusive merch access. Tiers above that, you get daily trivia and bonus content and monthly postcards and other things. So go check that out. Buy merch. Classic. Until next time, come like and subscribe. I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so you do. And don't be the Red Queen or Stain about it. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. What is the finger gun? Finished filming. It is snowing like the Dickens outside right now. So I really need to like finish this off and get home because it's a little intense out there, friends.